please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. This is the easiest leg because all the weight is on the kick, si kick stand side and it's actually a little more arduous on this side. So I'm going to do this wrong where I make a mistake and it comes through to show you if you make the error, how you correct it. Why would you change the fork position anyway? Here's a preview. All motorcycles are delivered to you off the showroom floor. The position of the forks themselves are determined by either the manufacturer, which would in this case would be Triumph, or a test rider who during testing had the forks moved around until they found what they thought was a pretty neutral place to be where the bike handled well. It's always nice to have factory settings tested first before you then go ahead and change the settings to see what you can get out of it. So the first thing to do, go for a ride. Again, a few hard hits from those sharp edge ripples. Right, ride number two. Nice little quick squirt there, eh? <laughs> Bottom out, right there. At this point, if you didn't know you couldn't have all that, you would then go, oh, well, I need to make a change when you're actually far too close. What we're really looking for on the road is 20 to 25 millimeters of buffer. So when you ride normally, a little more, there it is. This is the gap we're looking for between bottom out and the travel used. That means in a crisis, especially on the road, you have plenty of room left to brake, lots of travel left, so you're not going to endo the bike because you hit bottom. Knowing what we just did in the settings that we just created, then for me, my weight, the pace I was riding, which was very leisurely, we are far, far too close for bottom out. Given the damping and springs, these springs are going to be fine for me. I can fine-tune preload, fine-tune compression, and at that point, get myself where I need to be with my safety buffer so that I can ride with confidence knowing I have something left. If I'd come back here with no compression and no preload, then all this unused travel means that the front end, the fork height, is high. So you're working way too hard to get the bike to turn because you've got to either brake all the way past the apex, you've got to decelerate past the apex to control the bike, in addition to you keeping weight on the handlebar to turn it right or left. And that's way too much work that doesn't need to happen. And this is where we come on the part now of saying, I'm gonna move the forks because my front end is up here and I don't have the budget to go ahead and fix everything internally at this time. How do we move the front end? Well, let's show you how to do that using just your kickstand. In order to get the forks to move, we start with the easiest leg, which is this side. And we do it in a way where the motorcycle has no chance of falling over. In doing this using a kickstand versus a rear stand, a front end stand, and a pin stand, or a bursig, or something like a bursig. We've got to do things very slowly, carefully, to make sure we keep the fi friction fit, and then based on the friction fit, we can then make sure on the cap side that the piece we want to measure from is in the right spot. At this point, my test with zero preloads and very little compression is that we're bottomed out. I'm actually going to change the fork position by reducing the amount of black because I want the front a little taller. I'm going to try that first because I know what we have in engineering, 
it's pretty soft anyway. So for me personally, that's the direction I want to take. You can choose whichever way you want to go, but think about it based on the preload compression and the ride test, what makes the most sense. So to start, we're going to loosen the upper triple clamp and get that fully loose. So it's, it's literally wobbly. It'll spin by hand. So pull that back a little bit. Okay, so that's done. Next, we can go ahead and undo one of these completely. Again, make sure it's loose and there's no problem. Now comes the bit where you've got to be careful and you've got to take your time. So crack it and then you'll feel it clunk where the face of the bolt starts to lose contact with the triple clamp. And you just feel it. There, it just went. Now, if that's correct and the bike is still there, we should be able to move the fork and turn it where it sits. So, at that point, see it moving? And right now it's going up, and that's not the direction that we want, but it makes the point. I want it to go the other way, so what I'm going to do is turn it against the kickstand, all the way. That's locked. I'm going to push upon the handlebar, and I'm going to turn the fork downwards. So there, I just made a huge change in fork height to change my geometry without stands and all kinds of special equipment. But again, I'm working very slowly. I'm not rushing, I'm taking my time. At this point, depending on where we wanted to go, we were roughly at 12 millimeters on the bolt. We were also using the angled side of the cap. But when you look at the half moons that are cut out, they're actually flat. So now in order to measure what's ideal, is to go ahead and put one of those flats over by our mark and it's right on the flat, look at that. And we are completely on the flat, so we're not trying to guesstimate where we are on the angle. So our previous measurement on the angle was 12. We want to decrease that number and as you can see there's no black sticking up compared to this side. There's a huge, huge difference. Let's remeasure on this side, go right from the corner down to the flat. There it is. And we have, it was 1201 and I touched it and it's 1198. I want to go three less. So what I'm ideally looking for is 8.98 or nine millimeters. So let's drop it down to nine, 901, good enough, right. So now the flat's there. Let's work that up until it's taken up that gap on the flat. So a little bit of patience. Very careful work and going from the same part, which was we were on the outside. So that's the outside. Just bring it up carefully. We're still in contact and we're still missing. That's contact. Just one more nudge. That's too far. Okay. Back down again. Start again. Bring it back to the flat. That's clear, that's hitting. So that's where we need to be. At this point now, as long as the bike stays still and we fasten it up, we should be golden. We'll go to the bottom because that's the easiest bolt to reach. Turn the ratchet. That's tight. Recheck, make sure we're on the flat. Yes, we are. All right, that's one side done. Now we'll go ahead and fasten everything up. Torque specs, 
Usually these bolts are between 12 to 16 foot pounds. So make sure you follow your owner's manual specifications. Okay, that takes care of that. Now we'll go to the upper. Now all we have to do is exactly the same process on the other side. This is the easiest leg because all the weight is on the kick, si kick stand side. So we have to be even more careful here. And it's actually a little more arduous on this side. So I'm gonna do this wrong where I make a mistake and it comes through to show you if you make the error, how you correct it. Dear me, Hoy. good grief. Reason number two why I would change the fork position from what the factory gave me. Rationale number three, why would you change geometry position of the forks? Rationale number four, four veins here, three veins there. You cannot get this bike to turn. Now let's summarize this and make it easy so we can give you kind of either a thought pathway or a decision tree to work from. Everything is based on this was done. So this is not picking a bike up and going at it blind. We have already set damping and sag correctly and then we're gonna go through this process. So, catch the full video at DaveMossTuning.com. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email. Dave at DaveMossTuning.com